Welcome to Centurion for this important Mzanzi Super League 2019 match between the host, the Twani Spartans, and the Durban Heat. The Spartans are coming off a good victory against the Pearl Rocks, while the Durban Heat suffered a victory at home against the Cape Town Blitz. We've had a little bit of rain, but uh, fortunately, things look good for now. The sun is out, and uh, play will get underway un on time, and we won't have any loss of overs just yet. Heads is the call. Yeah, that's what you normally do at this ground. Very hard to defend. Clarsen said the toss. He'd also like to have a bowl first, but he's not. Really interested to see how Tom Curran goes. I haven't seen a lot of him. Obviously, seen a bit of international cricket. See how he goes in these conditions. But a very well-rounded side. Spearheaded with the ball by Mornay Morkel and Lungi and Giri. Like the look of Simpamla. Rule for Namavo, I'll tell you what. He's a fighter. Play a lot of cricket on this ground. And the rest of their speak for themselves. Abi de Villiers. Looking forward to seeing him light this field up again. Durban Heat. Very good side. I'm looking forward to watching this Wesley Marshall. Seen a bit of him this season. He plays locally here for the Titans. He'll know this ground well. Very hard hitting batsman. Hopefully, Alex Hales can get going, the overseas player. But also a very well rounded side. Looking forward to seeing Janssen as well. Very, very tall bowler. Hits the deck hard. Two umpires. They're making their way out to the middle. Umpires walking out into a sunny field, which obviously is really good news. And the field is bathed in beautiful sunshine as we get ready for this clash. <laughs> Flicked away. And with fine leg up in the inner ring, there's always going to be a boundary on the offer. Mr. Brain, where he loves the leg side. It was very wide. He goes after it and he gets enough bat on it to get it to backward point. Flicked away. And again, another boundary towards that uh, backward square leg, fine leg region. Oh, it's a thick edge, but there's no slip in place. And it'll end the over with a lucky boundary. 26 without loss. Beautiful shot, straight down the ground. It's one of the best shots in the book. Use of the feet. That was a wonderful late adjustment to get it uh, backward of point. It's very well played. Brilliant hands from Dean Alga. Picking up on all the stuff out there, Dominic Cork. Poor delivery, poor, poor delivery. Yeah, it's a natural angle for Malusi. Oh. Luck inside edge. Fortune, but nonetheless, they are runs. Oh my goodness, Dean Elga, that is classy. With his ungainly technique and his good timing. Run out on, oh, he's gone. They needed that to the Durban Heat. Handile Petlukwayo. And it's probably a good time now for Dame Villas to get all, everybody in as well. But just watch this. The ball goes straight to Petlukwayo. Look, he takes his time, aims. Gone. Excellent from the experience, Petlukwayo. He knew straight away. So an important wicket. The team can get around now and talk about their tactics. But a good innings by Tina Stabrain. He goes... Uh, for 40, it's 81 for one. Oh. Yeah! Outside edge has justice been served. The Durban Heat, but not a very happy AB de Villiers. Closer look at this. And I think he's maybe got a very thin edge through Dane Villas, and they have just started to peg them back. Big wicket. A.B. de Villiers gone for two, it's 86 for two. Very short, and it deserved to be hit. No, okay. Oh, again, better bat on it this time around. Driving, and straight over the top. Well, this is a good innings from class and just what did the home side need? Well, it's a bit of luck, 
But uh, at this stage, if he's going to be swinging like this, luck can often go your way. Well, he's hit this out towards the mid-wicket region and taken a nice running catch on the boundary. Yeah, Malusi's about to try to tuck up behind Klaas and he did it pretty well. The length was good as well. A vital wicket for the Durban at a crucial period of the game. Good piece of bowling, tucking him up. Good catch by Bavian Libba, getting around the ball nicely. And what's good also, he's making class and hit to the biggest side as well. I think that's important. Cover that smaller side, but it, an important innings from the captain. Goes to 23, 123 for three. It certainly is raining. Never listen to Paul Harris. He tells me it's not going to rain. He's the local man. Where are you now, Paul Harris? Disappointing. And I'm not sure how long this will last. There has been a lot of rain around this region over the last few days. So the players will leave the field. Just remember the Spartans are in a very good position. 124 for three. Uh, we're in the 14th over. Like we've seen around the Johannesburg area here in uh, Centurion and in Durban, there's been a lot of rain. Good outfield, though, good drainage, so hopefully if it stops, we won't be off for too long. Welcome back to uh, Supersport Park in Centurion, and the rain has stopped, and that has led to a revision of the playing conditions. The uh, match has been reduced to 16 overs. The power, power eight power play will be five overs. One bowler can bowl four overs, and four bowlers can bowl a maximum of three. So that is the news coming from this particular encounter between the Tswane Spartans and the Durban Heat. And I'll just uh, a quick reminder that the Durban Heat won the toss and decided to have a bowl first. Two overs after this left, so there are plenty of options. But I think that the fielding side wouldn't have been too unhappy. Hard to come in and hit from ball one. Down the leg side, and that will be four leg buys. As uh, the 14th over comes to an end, it's 129 for three. Gives himself some room. And that has been powered away through the offside. Middolf is in the circle. A short delivery hanging in the air and the wicket that's really well executed it certainly is quicker surprised from bullion maybe this weekend's quickened up a touch with the rain covers on that really surprised part from bullion it's a good bouncer a good option from Abbott well executed part from bullion just creamed him the ball before before towed it Straight up in the air, easy catch, has to go, and that's what the Durban Heat wanted. They wanted to keep taking wickets, try and stop the scoring. It's 133 for four. That is a good option, and what a way to finish the over. Picks up 12, 141 for four. So, the players have left uh, the ground because of a little bit of uh, uh, lightning and there's a little bit of rain falling. And uh, we're going to take a short break and when we have more news and better news, we hope, you'll join us then. And we are back out in the middle. A reduced game, the rain is gone and uh, the Durban Heat are ready to bat. They have a target of 66 in five overs. Ooh. Top edge, it's gone straight up. The bowl is calling for it. There's a couple of fielders around him too, and a wicked first ball. Well, they went a mile in the air. It really did. Marshall having a full go. Possibly could have had one or two sighters, but decided to have a crack first up. Skied it. That was a really, really good catch. Bowler wanted it. He bowled it, he wanted it, back of a length, I think that's the length on this wicket. Back of a length, banging in hard, natural length for Luke Giri. Has a full go at it, top edge, he knows, he hasn't got any of it. Bowler wanted the catch, got it. 
the Spartans, well, they strike re really, really early in this second innings. It's not 4-1. This is what uh, they are facing at the moment. It's reduced to five overs. Uh, power eight, power play, just two overs. They want to try and take advantage of that, of course. One of the bowlers bowling one and a maximum of two for another two bowlers. Target is 66 to win. It's a required run rate of just over 13, almost 14 and over. It's a tough task ahead of uh, the Durban Heat. And went ball one and already in Giddy has a wicket. Powered away in the air, straight to the fielder. And Lungi and Giddy's on a hat trick. Unbelievable start here by the Twine Spartans. A great piece of bowling, back of a length, just like Eric just said now, back of a length, that's the ideal length on the surface. And the danger man, Vian Libba, hitting it down, cow corner's throat. Great start, perfect start for Twine Spartans, putting the Durban heat on the back foot straight away. Yeah, the length was good again. Field press, even better. Put the man out way in front of square. He couldn't have picked him out any better. Maybe De Villiers, he doesn't drop any of those. Tell you what, massive pressure here now for the Durban Heat. They've come out 66 from five and then big trouble. Nord for two. You don't need a fielder, you're out there, that's for sure. It's not going to happen. What a big shot. That's a great shot, Dane Villas. He said, enough of this. You want to bang it in back of the length? i put you on the bank. That is a great shot. Got enough on it. It's still top, sort of top edge of the bat, but that force kind of a long way here at the high felt. And that goes a long way in helping the Durban Heat. They need a lot more of that. But this man, he's a fighter. He really is. He's moved across again, and he's going to have the same result into the crowd. Great shot, slog sweep by Dane Villas. He plays a plays a brilliant shot of 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 Tom Curran, puts him under pressure, puts him under pressure straight away, shuffling to the wide line on the offside and taking full advantage of the field that's set by by Hendrik Klaassen with square leg and fine leg up. He knows any sort of bat takes it over the over the boundary. Well, hits it straight and hits it with power. And that makes a big over for the batting side. Two overs gone. It has to have five overs to constitute a result. There's uh, nothing we can do about that. Can't shorten it anymore. And currently it is raining. Umpires trying to keep the players out there as long as possible. 21 for two it is. Umpires is letting cricket win at the moment, which is perfect for us. Got him. Moved so far across his stumps. Mornay Morkel, the experienced campaigner, gets the third wicket. Now it's a great delivery, Mornay Morkel, holding his nerve. The previous over from Karen Wynn for 19 brought. The Durban hit back into the game. Gets his length right. Dane Villas going across his stumps. Onto off stump. Big wicket. And Dane Villas, you can saw previous over what he can do, how dangerous he can be. And 21 for three. It's 21 for three, we're in third over, still can't get a result unless these five overs are completed. It's raining at the moment, the umpires are having a chat and it looks like he's saying to the players, we might need to go off here. The two batters are starting to walk off already, Durban Heat probably happy about that. Unfortunately that means the game will be over. There'll be a no result yet again means the teams will share the points. The umpires uh, shaking hands at the moment with the Spartans players. The two batters are waiting sort of halfway. David Miller had just walked in and now some of the players from the dugout are starting to walk out onto the field. Dane Villas looks uh, a little perplexed though. Yeah, knowing Dane is he's the type of guy that would want the game to go on. He always wants cricket to be the winner. But unfortunately the umpires they make the call and they, they've, they've decided it's, it's, it's not good. Um, it looks like the rain's coming down pretty hard. Um, so yet again, another shared game between the, the Twanis Spartans and the Durban Heat. Yeah, it's a real pitchy. The umpires tried hard to get a game in yet tonight. It just didn't happen. 
weather unfortunately played its part. But it looked like even though five overs, it was really going to be a nice tight finish. It was starting to get really exciting because of the fact that it can only be a maximum of five overs and we lose over straight away. The umpires had no choice once they had set come off to call the game off. It's, uh, it's raining pretty steadily at the moment. It's lightened up just a little bit. And uh, unfortunately, once the umpires have now made the decision, they feel it's not fit to play. It is disappointing, of course, from the point of view of the Spartans in particular, who are in such a good position, even in a position possibly to get the bonus point. If they'd restricted the Durban Heat to 52 or less, they could have even got the bonus point as well. So they would have been in a really, really good position and uh, had a chance to push themselves up the table. From Durban Heat's point of view, maybe they, they missed a side opportunity as well. You never know what might have come with David Miller walking in. But uh, it looked like the Spartans were going to be able to take this game. Well, not much to talk about there. It was really quick. First two balls of the innings in Gidi. Marshall and Libba both caught skies deep in the night sky. It wasn't a great start. Then Vilas came in, hit two big boundaries, kind of brought the Durban Heat back into the game. And then Morne Morkel had the last say bowling Dane Vilas. And at the end of the day, fortunately, once again, the weather has had the last say in this game. Yeah, Lungi and Gidi, as Ella just said, started this game, the innings off beautifully for the Twine Spartans. Um, and then Dane Villas took took the impetus to, to Tom Cullen, which put him under pressure. The game ebbed and flowed for about 2.1 2 overs. Uh, there was so much <laughs> entertainment and excitement in, in that uh, 2.1 overs that we did watch. Unfortunately, the rain came down and it, it, the game is done. This is how things stand then after that. Durban Heat, well, they're finding it very difficult just to get results. They've had the one loss, but then they've had the three no results, which means they're on six points and they are second from the bottom. Twiny Spartans, well, they've moved up to 10 points, so getting a little closer to the top two, but it does mean that they've still got some work to do in this tournament. Long way to go, though, still. Well, we've still got a lot to come in the Mzanzi Super League, of course. Paul Rocks take on the Josie Stars, who are really struggling at the bottom of the table. The Paul Rocks, though, have just come off a big defeat against the Spartans, so that should be a very interesting matchup indeed. Thanks very much for your company. A pity about the result, of course, but we'll see you soon. Good night.